The following information and opinions expressed on The Sweet Divorce Podcast do not constitute nor are intended to be taken as legal advice. All content is generalized and for informational purposes only. Please contact our legal team or your own attorney for advice specific to your particular case. Thank you. It's sweet divorce. Life's sweeter after divorce. Let us help you get there. Hello, I'm Rosario Burba Santoyo, and this is my partner, Rebel Smith. Today, we're joined by our senior litigation attorney, Cassandra Leland, to talk about military retirement benefits. Good morning, Cassandra. Good morning. How are you guys? We're doing great. We're fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today and to embark some of your knowledge on the subject of military retirement. Right. Being that when, because it's federal, but it's also state, it kind of gets squirrely and it depends on a lot on how long you were married for, how long your spouse was in the military and how long you were married and they were in the military. Um, so there's a couple of different things to think about. There's a 1010 rule, which says that if you were married for 10 years to the service member and the service member was in the military for 10 years, then DFAP has the ability to pay them directly from your return which makes everything easier. You're not paying directly yourself for the rest of, of your life, essentially. So then DFAS will split it like any other qualified domestic relations order. If you were not, then DFAS will not do that. And in your documents, you will have to put in there what you were going to pay and how you were going to deal with um, any increases and any uh, anything else that comes along with the re retirement pay. So that's something that's really important because it's much easier to just have DFAS do it. But if you're not qualified, then they won't do it. The other things to think about, too, is if you were married to your spouse for 20 years and they were in the military for 20 years, but you were only married to them while they were in the military for 15 years, then you don't get any of the extra fun things after you retire except for one year of TRICARE is the only thing you'll be eligible for. If you were married for 20 years, they were in the military for 20 years and 20 years of that service overlapped with your 20 years of marriage. You get tried here as long as you don't remarry. You get tried here um, health insurance. You get to still go to the base and do the commissary and go to the exchange like you would have before. But you have to have been married uh, for, for the 2020 20 in order to get those benefits, which are still really great benefits if you're if you're eligible. Um, there is there is a possibility that if you do not meet any of the 10, 10, 15 and the, or, or the 20, 20, 15 or any of those, that you can still purchase some extra health care through the Department of Defense in order to have some health care to 36 months after a divorce. So these are entitlements outlined by the military directly? Yeah, those are the federal entitlements for the state can't do anything about it. Um, and actually, the retirement is governed by the federal, but the govern the federal DFAC, the federal government, um, gives it up to the state to decide how their military retirement is split. So every state gets to decide how they want to rule, uh, what each spouse is entitled to. In California, it's, the general rule is that you are entitled to half the length, half the community or community portion, which is the date of marriage to the date of separation. That's really interesting. So for the 1010 rule, the person has to be in the military for 10 years and you have to be married to that person for 10 years while they're in the military? They just have to have served for 10 years and you would have had to been married for 10 years. Okay. That's good to know. That is. So what sort of things are you still able to negotiate in California regarding military retirement? And Thing you want. I mean, and if you're having a negotiation, you can negotiate anything. However, um, the main issue we usually find is the survivor benefit plan, the EP, because once the military member retires, whether they retire during your marriage or during a divorce, they have to elect an FBP. And whether if you do not elect it at the time of retirement, you can't then get it. So those are things to think about while you're married, when you're, if your spouse does retire while you're married, um, if you, you know, sign the waiver because the spouse has to sign and understand, then you're giving away your right to collect that um, and have it, or have the SVP, which is essentially like having a, a life insurance policy on their retirement to say, hey, if they pass, I still get some. The SVP is also percentage. So I have a case right now where the our member retired kind of during the divorce process. 
he had to cover her FBP to 100% because they weren't divorced yet and they hadn't finalized everything. Once we finalized everything, she was only entitled to a 12.7% coverage, which is going to cost you a lot less. Think of an insurance premium, you know, and 100% it's going to be a lot more and negotiating who pays for that extra. Um, and so once we were able to get him his divorce, he was able to go to DFAS with the judgment and say, hey, I want the 100% to go down to 12.7, which is going to cost him less to, to cover that. Um, now, I also have another client that she came and she's receiving the portion from DFAS, which is great, but DFAS is deducting her portion from her her portion of the SBP from her portion of the retirement when he, the other party, had agreed that he would cover 100% of that. So now we had to go back and ask for reimbursement for the money that was already taken from hers and essentially given to him. So you have to keep an eye on that because DFAS, just because you've negotiated that in your contract or your judgment doesn't mean the DFAS has to follow that or that they're going to follow that. We're going to take a quick break. Sweet Divorce will be right back after these messages. Need help with your divorce? Not to worry. Here at Burgo Santoyo Smith, we have the answers to all your questions pertaining to court orders, mediation, family law, and healthy co-parenting. Find us at www.bsslegal.com or give us a call at 833-931-1615. That's 833-931-1615. We are here to serve you with several locations in California from San Diego, Escondido, El Centro, and Monterey, and one location in Swansea, Illinois. Burgo Santoyo Smith, life's sweeter after divorce. Let us help you get there. Want more sweet divorce? Find us on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at BSS Legal. So is there anything that California law specifically says about the SVP that you just mentioned? Really? Split it. They split it 50%. Each party has to pay half of it if they if they elect to and they want it. Um, it's one of those negotiating tools. You know, one party is always going to want the other party to have to pay 100%. Um, most of the time we, we get there and the judges do 50-50 to make it equal um, for both parties, which the SBP does take away from how much you receive. It does lower the amount you receive from your retirement um, because it is an insurance, essentially, coverage. But it's not. So the money comes out and it's not top. So you don't at least don't have to worry about that portion of it. Is there a timeline that somebody has to elect that SVP coverage? For example, if somebody, um, a, a former military person has, divor- maybe they have um, selected retirement prior to the divorce, separation occurs, they're receiving retirement, and now the divorce happens, right? Is there a time that the divorced person needs to say, I want to make sure we keep that SVP? Well, the SVP happens at your time of your retirement. So they are going to elect that at the time they put in their paperwork to retire. That's one of the questions. However, they will automatically be covered under SVP unless the spouse waives it. So the spouse actually has to waive their their interest in it in writing before it's actually going to be waived. So it's always it's automatically already included. You just have to uh, either waive it, which, again, we have a lot of negotiation with that. If if you waive SVP, then we'll do this. I mean, negotiations are always great with these things because we can do whatever we want, essentially in a negotiation where if you take this to court, just like all the judges say, their hands are tied to whatever California law says they have to do. Um, So most of these things are just important to know. Are you able to waive it after the party has started, has already retired? post-divorce. You, you can change that after post-divorce. It, it also depends on, again, depends on what, what you did at retirement. A lot of it is going to look at what did you do when you put in your, your documents and how did that look? Because sometimes we can't undo what's already been done as much as we would like to. And the other thing is, is once they get retired, you're going to want to get in um, if, if they retired before your divorce and you're waiting for your portion. I know I think Gretel and I talked about if they're receiving their retirement, when there's no order that you should be getting your portion, it can go years with you not getting your portion of that. So if they're already receiving that, you are going to want to get that as a number one issue to settle. And um, we also have another client, some of our other attorneys that have gone 10 years not receiving their portion because it just hadn't been 
litigated and you know you're out that's a lot of money for somebody to have to pay in one fell swoop and it's a lot of money to be owed so it would still retroactively be owed to the person even if it wasn't ordered to be paid directly from DFAS. Yeah, it would be part of the date of separation amounts, you know, because that is something that if they would have, if they had earned that, and then we'd have to figure out what their portion was, but it's still owed to them just because they haven't, you know, just because DFAS hasn't formally done it, doesn't mean it's still not owed. And then you have to get it from the service member. And sometimes that can be difficult because if they don't want to pay it, they're going to um, do whatever they can to prolong those or, or, you know, disappear, quote unquote, so they don't have to deal with that issue. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Cassie. No Cassandra. problem. Thank you guys for having me. Um, thank you for embarking all of your wisdom upon us. Um, please, if you have any questions regarding your own military divorce or retirement benefits, um, don't hesitate to contact us for a consultation. Thank you. Thank you. It's